Hi, my name is Alex McDonald. This is just a brief video to describe my book, The World Perceived by A.J. McDonald. It's uh, subtitled, A Theological and Phenomenological Approach to Thinking, Perceiving, and Living in the World. I almost forgot. <laughs> anyway, uh, what can I say? Uh, I spent four years writing this as well as working in uh, a full-time job and having a social life. And so I put a lot of work into this book. And for 16 bucks on Amazon, that's like 1995 shipping and everything. It's uh, 275 pages. It's 249 pages of actual text. And uh, it's complete with the bibliography footnotes and everything else. And uh, I guess what I'd like to say is to try to describe something about the book. Uh, the best way for me to describe it is it's a theology book. It's really a book of very philosophical theology books, so it's really somewhat of a Christian philosophy. You don't hear that term very often, but it's a Christian philosophy. A lot of uh, philosophy in the book. But it is theologically based. I am a Catholic, so it is Catholic theology based, which is the best kind of theology of all. <laughs> so, because it's exhaustive. Anyway, uh, what I really attempt to do with the book is it's really designed for the seminary student who starts hearing all these things about science and atheism, especially the new atheism, naturalism, and all these things that a lot of people, especially young people, you know, and it is it's also a biblical theology, it's not a systematic theology, it's a biblical theology, meaning it takes its information from the, the Bible. It's not deductive like systematic, we don't do a bunch of doctrines and then deduce a bunch of things. No, we just take the Bible, it's inductive, biblical theology is inductive. We take the Bible and then we build from that a theology, it's like from the bottom up instead of the top down. So, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, it's for seminary students and, and people that, and it's designed for the general reader, but, you know, it's the kind of thing that somebody would be interested in if they're interested in science or religion. And uh, it's really designed as, it's kind of the book that I wish somebody had given me when I was younger. Because it delves into the uh, questions of being, uh, what is being, uh, who am I, why am I here, what, what is the world, you know, all these kind of, what is God, all these kind of things. So... It's just kind of my way of passing on somebody else, maybe somebody younger, who will find it and say, hey, you know, I'll adopt one of these concepts or some of them, and I'll go from there. And uh, so it's really designed to, well, somebody has, you know, somebody who doesn't know a whole lot about the philosophy of science, or the philosophy of Christianity, or philosophy in general, which is how to think, or how we think, uh, they can really get, you know, these atheists, especially the new atheists, with this, all these uh, plethora of books they're putting out these days, uh, you can start getting chipped away at your faith, you know, the Bible's just, you know, it's a bunch of ancient fairy tales, it's all just made up, a bunch of stories, and, you know, there's a big, you know, somebody up in the sky, where they say the invisible sky daddy, or something like that, you hear, or the, you know, all this kinds of crap. So really what I show is, from the very first page, I show that uh, all thinking is based on unprovable assumptions. That's how we think. We have to assume something about the world that's true, and we build from there. Everybody does that. Science does that too, especially science. But we all do that. Theology does that. You know, we take the bottom. And the revelation, the... Uh, the traditions passed on to us through the church that, back, that verifies the Bible. Uh, and scientists do the same thing. They assume the world is a physical world. It's not an illusion like the Hindus would think. It's a physical world that has laws. Uh, that we have logic and we have mathematics, which are all based on assumptions. You can't, science can't prove those things. It just is. They just take them for granted, and then they go from there. It's like Descartes never really stopped to examine his presuppositions about himself and the world. He just said, well, the world is, I am, so let's go from there. 
And, and we build this whole theory of, of uh, science on that. Science is especially <clears throat> shown to be, well, it's especially shown to be vulnerable when you deal with things like uh, morals, ethics, uh, things like aesthetics, what is beauty, what is goodness, what is justice, all these things, you can't put this under a microscope and, or into a computer and spit something out or under a microscope and see it, or a telescope. You know what I'm saying? You can't do a math equation and come up with these kinds of things. And, and a lot of these, what the book really boils down to, my own philosophical critique of the book, if I was to review it, I'd say, well, the whole philosophy of the book is experience. Everything's experience. It's, this, it's not overly objective, it's not overly subjective. It's trying to do this synthesis of objective and subjective. And it's just experience all the way down to this guy. And that, and he says that uh, the only purpose in life is loving people and helping them. And so that's my critique of the book. It is experience all the way down. You cannot escape from experience. <clears throat> there's the objective world and there's the subjective experience. It's been that way ever since the beginning, according to the Bible. Uh, because the world was not finished until beings created in God's image, male and female together, could experience the world as subjective, objective, total reality. The Trinity is the same way, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's this constant synthesis of God perceiving himself and his, if you could say, objective self and subjective self. Anyway, so yeah, it tries to, uh, by showing that, by, by show, this is a lot of, what a lot of people don't realize, or younger people, they, they take a lot of scientific what their people are asserting, atheists and scientists, not all scientists, but an atheist, you know, these new atheists, assert, you know, make these assumptions, just assertions, 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 and if you're not careful, you're thrown off guard, and you're like, well, gee, this, these sound like good arguments. But if you stop and think and look at the very basics of it, what are they assuming? You know, it undercuts their whole thing. You know, just like they would try to undercut mine. Well, you believe the Bible's true. What if it's not? You know, well, you believe the speed of light's constant. What if it's not? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, so anyway, and yeah, I do, uh, well, at the beginning of the book, I explain uh, what is theology, what is philosophy, or what is science, what is theology, and what is phenomenology, which is a philosophy, a relatively new, a postmodern philosophy, that really tries to approach uh, phenomenon as we experience it based on how it appears to us. It's all about appearances. So the book has a lot about it, about appearances in the book. As I said, everything's appearance and experience at bottom anyway, in my opinion. Anyway, I really flesh out through those parables, uh, the Good Samaritan uh, especially, uh, the kind of pe person that Christ wants us all to be, which is to be a loving, caring, a good, decent, honest person. All the things science can't tell you to do. And then at the end of the book, my last chapter is really wrapping up uh, what I've said very briefly, but then going on into more of the uh, cultural, social critique that science really requires of us. Uh, things like weapons design. You know, the, this country right now is going crazy with weapons design. It always has for the last 50 years, really. Uh, you know, science works overtime, making ways to kill people, and I hate that. That's not what we should be doing our, with our time and our energies. We should be trying to distribute food to the hungry and grow new crops and, and increase liberty and freedom to people and, and, and impose upon people their, their need to care for their, their moral obligation to care for others, whether it's employers, employees, family members, neighbors, friends. That's what's most important in life. And uh, like I said, the book's uh, it's not lengthy, but it's not too lengthy. It's a good, it should be a good read. Uh, it's indexed as well. I wouldn't write a book without an index because I don't hardly buy a book without an index, a nonfiction book, because I like to go back and refer to it and find something I'm looking for, which I've already had to do with my book. <laughs> so anyway, I hope this helps somewhat. The uh, world proceed. Uh, 1995, shipping and everything on Amazon. Uh, if you live here in town, I'll sell you one cheap. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time, and uh, God bless you. Have a nice day. 
Hi, my name is Alex McDonald. This is just a brief video to describe my book, The World Perceived by A.J. McDonald. It's uh, subtitled, A Theological and Phenomenological. Uh, I guess what I'd like to say is to try to describe something about the book. Uh, the best way for me to describe it is it's a theology book. It's really a book of very philosophical theology books, so it's really somewhat of a Christian philosophy. You don't hear that term very often. Approach to thinking, perceiving, and living in the world. I almost forgot. <laughs> anyway, uh, what can I say? Uh, I spent four years writing this, as well as working in uh, a full-time job and having a social life. And so I put a lot of work into this book. And for 16 bucks on Amazon, that's like 1995 shipping and everything. It's uh, 275 pages. It's 249 pages of actual text, and uh, it's complete with the uh, bibliography, footnotes, and everything else. And uh, but it's a Christian philosophy. A lot of uh, philosophy in the book, but it is theologically based. I am a Catholic, so it is Catholic theology based, which is the best kind of theology of all. <laughs> so, because it's exhaustive. 